Hello everyone, it's Natasha from Treasure Books. Welcome to part 11 of the ephemera making for junk journals. Okay, so today we're looking at this little embellishment for journal covers. They absolutely don't have to be embellishments for journal covers, but that's what I had in mind when I was making them. Now I saw this idea from Joanne over at Junk Journal Treasures. If you haven't heard of Joanne, please go and have a look at her channel. She always find her work quite inspiring. So I'm just going to show you what I've got over here. So I've got some with die cuts. Then I've got some, here's some more die cuts and stamping. Then I've got some with cutouts from book pages. So little fussy cutouts and sentiments and things like that. So these are all pictures from books. This here as well. And then I've got some really simple fussy cutouts. So they don't have to be quite as busy as, you know, look at this one, quite busy. And then this one, very, very simple. So something like this, beautiful to go on a nature journal so look at that gorgeous and then I also have some with some of those vellum stickers that you might have seen in my in love arts video so I I love the vellum stickers because you can still see the writing through uh, the sticker so these are some of the things that I have used and then also let's have a look at a journal so these ones are already finished journals and the, the covers are already decorated. But let's pretend, for example, that this is my journal and simply by putting one of these, you know, on there, I have a decorated cover. And then perhaps this size isn't the best for this journal. So let me just choose one which I think would look really, really good. So maybe something like this. Or let's have a look at something else. I think really... I don't know everything looks quite nice so you can have your journals and uh, you can make a bunch of little journals and then you have your covers ready and then especially if you're going to be putting laces or something let's have a look so this is a journal that I'm working on so this is the back but let's pretend again that it's the front and I have a little bit of this lace over here so let's say let's pretend this is the front of my journal so something like this I think it looks so beautiful and they're so easy quick and easy to make I don't know about you guys but making covers and and decorating covers is always seems to be a bit of a process you know when I'm trying to think how I should decorate the cover so this is what we're going to do in this little tutorial I have my steps over here which probably are not necessary because it's so straightforward process but I think it will be nice for you guys to see exactly you know the process of making them and I feel like hopefully I hope you will feel very inspired and you will have your own little ideas come into your mind on how you can use these all right let's get started so I'm going to be using one of these this is like a page divider you can use a file folder like I wanted to use this but it's it's a little bit more flimsier than this one this one's a bit thicker so if you want to use this as a book cover embellishment I think you might want it to be somewhat sturdy so this is quite a good thick quality cardstock I guess uh, all right so I'm going to start by ripping the edges and ripping it in four so here we go So I just wanted to point out, when you are ripping towards you, you get this kind of the rip. You, you see this, how it's all the same. It's got these edges. I really like that. But that means the other piece doesn't have that same edge. It's got the edges here, but here it's a different edge. So then, because I like it all to be the same, I, I turn it around and I just rip a small piece towards me. So then I can have that kind of a, an edge rather than it being on the other side and now we can have depending on how large your journal is you know I can leave it large you might want it to be a journaling like a large journaling tag or something but I am going to rip these again into half and now I need to do the same for this one here if I want that same edge which I do it's no big deal but I like it Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to tidy up the edges. So I like the edge to be 
somewhat thin rather than really you can see this here and this is only happening because this is a very thick cardstock this wouldn't be happening if there was a lesser weight cardstock so i'll just demonstrate with this one i'm not going to throw this out i'll use it for something but see what i mean the edges are already you know nice and thin so because i'm using this cardstock i'm getting this look and I now i'm just going to go back and neaten the ones that i don't like so i um, think i'm quite happy with this and you can see that they're different sizes this is the largest one so and i'm quite happy with that because when i have a stack of them made when i'm actually needing to use it for a journal then i can you know if i have a larger journal i can use a larger one or a smaller one and a smaller one so i really don't mind having different sizes so my next step now is going to be to do some stamping and inking so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to ink the edges and then i will do some stamping okay so first i'm going to protect my desk and then i'm using my doesn't matter what really but this one is vintage photo and so now i'm just going to ink the edge all around and now i want to make sure that all of these white bits are inked there so i might do it this way a little bit and that's giving me that nice ragged look as well and i'm also coming in a little bit to give it that sort of an aged edge look so i'm coming in a little bit on the onto the cardstock concentrating on the corners just to you know a little bit so you can see i think that one's fine and i'm going to do the same for all of the others okay so here we go they look really cool nice and aged let's have a look our next step uh, step is some stamping so you can choose any stamp that you have i am using a script stamp this is really cool anyway you can really use any stamp for a background um, anything that you have in your stash so i am just using two stamps i'm using the script stamp and then i've got this little circle mandala type thing so what i'm going to do i i like to do them one by one so i prepare my little thing i'm stamping on and now i'm just going to stamp some sections of the of the stamp and then some sections of my journaling or um, my embellishment that I'm working on and I'm just going to randomly stamp around something like that I'm, I'm quite happy with that and then now I'm going to use my little circle stamp and then just stamp here and there I'm happy with that maybe need something in this corner but I'm, I'm going to leave it as it is so I'm quite happy with this one and now my next one cleaning my stamps I'm really happy with how these turned out and they look beautiful just like this too as little journaling spots inside journals so now the next thing that i do and i do this next step with all of them regardless of what i'm going to use as my focal point i pop down some book pages so i'm just going to choose some pages from this uh, book and i like to keep these ones so i'll use them in another project and now just start ripping into the book pages so obviously i want my book page to be smaller than the embellishment i'm working on i just cut it and then i start and then i check and then i go back to it and i take off some more and yeah so i think that one's all right for that one So I'm quite happy with that. So next step is inking my book pages so that they pop up even more. And on some cases, I might even go ahead and sew. So you can see on this one, for example, it's not actually sewing through the card, only the book pages sewn uh, around the edges, just, just to give it more of an edge. So I might do that on one of them and then leave the other ones, ones as they are. All right, so let's ink those edges. Thank you. 
straight away you can see how much better it's looking when the edges are inked as opposed to not inked so it's such a huge it makes such a huge di difference inking the edges it gives it a definite finish so it makes it pop off a page and almost gives it a three-dimensional look you know so at this point I might decide if I want to do some sewing around my book page so I might go ahead and do that on one of them and then on another one I'm going to add a maybe a separate layer I just saw this lying on my desk so I'm going to add a second layer of a little something so this was here within uh, hand reach so I'm going to pop this down too uh, I usually like to keep things simple I don't like a whole lot of business let's see where we're going to add it maybe yeah I'll, I'm going to add it there and I might go and sew around one of them so I'm going to sew around this one just using a simple straight stitch on my sewing machine just go around I'll be right back okay here we go so I just sewn around one of them and then you know you might want to leave this there for a little bit of extra interest but I just usually cut that off okay so now my next thing would be gluing this down but before I glue it down I want to first find what I'm going to actually put on top of all of this and then I glue down step by step so now I'm going to go into my die cuts my stickers my uh, fussy cut images and decide what I will put on so I just already have a few cutouts here that are sitting on my desk desk from actually doing the project so I'm just going to have a look these are all from books cutouts from books so maybe something like that would look nice on that one maybe something like this what do we think about this maybe something like this all right so I just went into my little die, die cuts and we can really uh, anything that you know we put on will look okay it's just finding finding the perfect thing so this one you know if I was to ink the edges would look quite nice and let's have a look what else could we do or maybe we could maybe we could layer it something like you know inking the ed edges first and then it doesn't have to fit right inside the you know our card maybe some lace add a little bit of lace what have I got in this one this is how I store my die cuts in a in bags like this and then in a box so maybe this always looks quite nice maybe something like this and then a little sentiment up here maybe right there in the middle but I like it off center like that I thought that maybe it would be nice to use a little book plate so I'm just using I want to use these little they're actually stickers like from a um, sticky note stickers type thing that I got from a two dollar shop and I think something like this would look cool make it into a book plate so maybe use a little bit of an off cut over here I'll see what I can do with this so I think the idea is really just to play around with what you've got that's always the idea and I'm actually really really liking the idea of a book plate on one of these the only thing I'm not liking at the moment is the fact that this has very straight edges and then all of these edges here are curvy and ripped and all of that so now I'm thinking you know how can I I don't know make it blend in a little bit so I'm just going to try to round the edges over here I could use my corner punch but they're tight it's tiny so I might as well try and use my hands my scissors and then of course I'm going to ink the edges it looks so much better with inked edges how do we feel about this I might uh, ink this butterfly a little bit so to me it doesn't feel complete for some reason you know when I look at it I don't get that feeling of yes that's perfect so um, in that case I will just keep trying you know something else maybe so I want the butterfly off center a little bit and then I feel like you know the eye is traveling it has to go somewhere I feel like I need maybe a little something in the corner there like a third element how about if I use another smaller butterfly let's see how that would look 
Okay, so this is the point where I'm definitely overthinking it. When I'm looking at this, it doesn't give me that feeling of perfect, you know, I'm happy with this. I'm, this is, this is what I've been looking for. So I don't know if it's because I need maybe a smaller butterfly or maybe a different color, but I don't mind it. It's quite nice. So let's, let's just move on to the next step and call it done, shall we? Okay, so now before I move on to my next step, I grab all of my top little pieces and I ink the edges. So also I like to use little sentiments like for example here I've got this one and then over here I've got this dreamer you know um, before I actually glue down my little pieces I like to sort of look at them and see if I want to be adding extra things to it so I think this one is finished and I'm going to pop it to the side before I go back to it to uh, glue it down and now I'm looking at this one and for some reason this is I'm noticing that she has no legs like you know why does she have no legs so that's kind of bothering me it's I mean I did fussy cut this image but where are the legs so I can either you know get rid of this image which I want because I took the you know I went and wasted my time cutting it out so I am adamant that I want to use it but what can I do maybe I can somehow cover let's see if I can put a little bit of lace or something yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'll make it work. I have to make it work. And I think when we are faced with these kinds of things, it helps creativity expand, maybe. I don't know. Something has to happen over here. I'm just looking on my desk what I've got. Maybe I can use one of these. And it seems like this one is going to be a busy one. What else have I got? What's this? Looks like an egg. I don't know. So the egg doesn't really go. We don't get rid of the egg. Maybe something like this. I'm just playing around. That's the whole point. I'm just playing around and see, you know. That's supposed to be a heart, but you can't really tell that it's a heart. So. And then I'm thinking like I can put all of these elements down and then if I can find a simple sentiment it might make sense with the whole I think I like that that's pretty cool I might move that in a little bit just so it's not so in your face and then I have this little pre-stamped images I have a video on that so maybe I don't know dreams dreams or lovely I like that supposed to be a fun quick process so I'm quite happy with that that one is very elaborate so uh, there's a lot of elements here and then so maybe we can keep these ones very simple so let's have a look I am going to keep this one really simple and just leave it as it is and then this one here what is happening with this image is that the image is getting lost amongst all of this business in the background so I'm just contemplating what I want to do here and I think I've decided I'm just going to leave it as it is and maybe I can add a little something up the top a little sentiment let's see so maybe on this one I can use a little something like that that says live your life because you know it's fleeting and the flowers in the vase and all that kind of thing you know and the flowers are beautiful and bright and then they slowly fade away so live your life oh hang on maybe we can use the egg should we use the egg here somewhere hmm so now it looks like like the moon or something yes I'm gonna I'm just gonna leave it okay so now after we have decided what they're going to look like now our next step is to go ahead and glue it all down I am using my uh, you use whatever you have I'm using my uh, glue stick and then I also like to go over it with a second type of glue so this is just the one that I have uh, quick drying glue you can use PVA glue whatever you have and then if you get wrinkling you can always leave it under something heavy overnight or a few nights and then that will sort out that problem so then what I do if for example for something like this elaborate 
because um, obviously I have to take it all off and then glue down my base and glue it all in layers. Uh, what I might do is just simply take a photo of that and that's exactly what I'm going to do now. So let's take a little photo of that and then I can look at that as I'm gluing it down if I've forgotten you know where everything goes I can just refer back to my photo. So now let's take all of this off and I'm just going to start gluing it down. I personally uh, don't rely on a glue stick that's just my personal thing like I don't think a glue stick will hold so you might find that you know especially if you're selling journals and then you have this beautiful especially because this is going to you know if you're going to use it on a cover and then two years later you go to open your journal and everything starts disintegrating and falling apart because from ex speaking from experience I'm really not sure if there's a particular type of glue stick that exists in the world that's permanent you know for, for decades but from personal experience um, I found that all the things start falling out so okay so I am going to go ahead and glue all of my embellishments and after I have glued them all down I will come back but before I go I just wanted to mention after I have glued everything down and uh, because there's you know layers and thick cardstock on top and all of that uh, I'm really um, anal about this sort of stuff because see how this one's now coming up a little bit just because it's you know sitting on a layer of sewing and that sort of thing I really really like to make sure that everything is glued down completely like there's no little edges that are lifting up, lifting up so straight after gluing everything down I want to check first if there's any seepage of the glue and that's another thing that I don't like you know when you can see glue that seeped out and leaves a shiny surface so I think I'm being probably too much of a perfectionist but I think because I sell my journals I want them to look as perfect as, as possible so that's why like if I was doing this for my own personal journal to be honest I would still be so anal about it so anyway what I do is I have glued it all down I've checked that there's no seepage and then I like to either put it in a book or see I've got things already in there like little flowers drying this is my book that's just sitting there um, you know with little things that I put inside and just I just put it under this book or any or anything heavy really and I leave it there for it just for a little bit it doesn't have to be you know a very long time By the way, I was just about to glue this one down and this thing that I was calling the egg actually came out from in here, this little die cut, but I wanted to use a different image, a stamped image in there. So this was just sitting on my desk and I forgot that what it came from. So I was calling it the egg because I have eggs in my mind uh, on my mind right now because of Easter coming up. So that's probably why, but I like to keep, as you probably know, if you've been watching my channel, I like to keep things, stuff, lots of stuff, because I always tend to find a use for it. So I do, I do need to stop myself from hoarding, which is what I've done for many years, but not anymore. I don't throw things away, but I, you know, if I'm keeping something, I want to make sure that I, I'm actually going to use it. So if it's been sitting around for too long and I can't find a use for it, then I will have to throw it in the bin. So I don't know about you guys, but with everything that's going on in the world, being, you know, home and in lockdown and not going anywhere and, you know, I, I mean, usually I like to stay at home a lot. So it's not like I'm taking it too hard, but I have found in the last couple of days that you know it's taking its toll hang on I'll be right back well considering that my project is finished I ran out of time to talk about the other thing but I just wanted to say that 
I've definitely been having ups and downs, huge ups and downs in one day and, you know, from day to day. So I'm just trying to sort of stay motivated and it's really difficult when we don't know where, you know, things are going and what the future holds. So I guess the, the only thing that I can do is try and stay present in the moment, uh, try and keep crafting because it brings me joy even though sometimes it's hard to do it because it's you know feels like what's the point but then even before all of this sometimes when I'm down in the dumps I, I think what's the point so um, I don't know anyhow this is the completed project what do you guys think I'm actually really liking this PC one here I really like this I think this is my favorite uh, but they kind of oh this one might be my favorite but I do know that she has no legs under this so um, so I think this one wins and plus it's a book plate there so it's perfect to go on a journal cover so I'm really liking it and maybe this one can have a little story she's standing there with like a cute little face saying I love my dress look love I love my dress and my hat it's it's simply lovely I don't know maybe that's the story of that one so uh what do you guys think let me know but maybe let's pretend that this is my plain journal cover but it's got a little bit of color there and then i just pop this on there and it's done so i think it looks quite nice but then it can also be a journaling card inside the you know inside pockets inside journals and things like that so now that i have a whole heap i can go ahead and make a whole heap of journals and have journal embellishments ready so I don't have to spend time about you know thinking about how to decorate a journal cover so there we go let me know what you guys think I hope you like it thank you so much for being here with me today and I will see you in my next video